this is jagannath jadav and i'm back with uh, my next task for the prodigy internship uh, for of uh, machine learning so uh, let's get into the task so here we have task number 2 it says create a k means clustering algorithm to group customers of a retail store based on their purchase history okay uh, so uh, first of all uh, i have downloaded the mall uh, underscore customers dot csv from the link provided which is from kaggle we'll uh, do a walk through uh, through this project okay so uh, first of all we imported all the libraries necessary for this project and then uh, simply uh, created the data frame uh, pd dot read underscore csv mall underscore customers dot csv and uh, we call the head function to look what uh, data we have so first column we have customer id the second column we have gender male female uh, age um, age column we have uh, and then we have annual income column and spending score so let's explore the data frame now uh, like what kind of uh, what amount of uh, records we have uh, what is the mean and uh, do we have any uh, missing values here we we see a df dot info we have no missing values no non null uh, values so it's like uh, the data is clean uh, we don't ha uh, have to do any kind of pre processing or we don't have to do any kind of uh, processing to the data uh, like filling out the missing values and stuff we don't need to do that over here so uh, what what i've done here is created a mask uh, where spending score is greater than 50 so first let's break down the spending score uh, it's from 1 to 100 so let's break it down from 1 to 50 and 50 and above so now we, uh, we have created a mask of uh, the customers which are spending more than uh, which are having spending score more than 50 so df underscore score is about all the customers which are which are having a spending score of more than 50 easy now uh, the same we did a describe uh, we got a count of 97 and uh, so now we performed a uh, dish plot or else we can call it a histogram of all these uh, all these uh, columns age column annual income column uh, and spending score column so uh, also to know that uh, annual income column is in k dollars that means uh, uh, let's say 80 so that is eighty thousand dollars okay so i created a histogram of all three all of three columns and uh, we are, here we can see that uh, these are normally distributed uh, but with a little skewness uh, only the spending score has a perfect uh, like it's a perfectly distributed uh, normal distribution so uh, then uh, we did some visualizations of the data to get a to get an overview that what kind of uh, clustering is going to take place over here and uh, so uh, we did a histogram of age that age versus spending score so basically this is this is uh, spending score above 50 uh, uh, this is about the people or the customers who have a spending score of more than 50 and their age distribution is uh, visualized over here so we can see that uh, you know younger uh, customers like who are below 40 below the age of 40 are spending more and uh, it is obvious very obvious that uh, young people score uh, you know spend more they don't think about the future and stuff but uh, yeah that is true uh, so now uh, later on we did a count plot of gender like which gender spends more so this is a uh, spending score 51 to 100 that means uh, the gender distribution of higher higher spending score so that is also uh, you know governed by females and the next uh, part yeah and the next part over here i have done is uh, i i checked the spending score from 0 to 100 and check the gender distribution of that uh, and in this plot also the females are governing the uh, you know uh, graph so basically uh, by both of these we got to know that females spend more and that is also the truth next uh, i plotted a relationship uh, between age income and spending score basically i did a pair plot of all these so to get a relationship uh, as in 
to get a correlation between all these uh, plots uh, but uh, i didn't get a linear regression uh, uh, you know a strong linear regression of them but i got to know about the dense density of uh, the points as you can see over here the, the plots are very dense over here uh, here also the plots are very dense and here also the plots are very dense so what what happens is we get an overview of uh, where the clustering is going to take place and where it should be taking place so next uh, i did a distribution of values in age annual income and spending score according to gender so this is a very interesting uh, visual this is age versus annual income and uh, we have two legends male and female so basically uh, we can we can see that uh, you know uh, at the age of 40 to 50 uh, the distribution over here uh, like the annual income is maximum max uh, is like max to max it, uh, people are earning uh, 120k dollars 100 to 120k dollars uh, and whereas we can see that uh, at the age of 30 also people are earning 140 appro like approximately 140k dollars so we uh, these outliers are a very uh, good uh, visual for us whereas we can see the density of the minimum uh, like uh, like an average on an average uh, uh, 30 to 40 uh, age grouped people are earning on an average of uh, you know 80 uh, 60 to 100k dollars and uh, the bifurcation is also given about males and females so yeah and then again i have plotted but the difference is an annual income versus spending score so the people with an uh, with a higher annual income uh, they have a spending score uh, they have a higher spending score whereas the people with uh, an average uh, annual income have an average spending score whether the, uh, whether uh, whether it is a male or a female it doesn't matter and then uh, i plotted a box plot and swarm plots to get uh, the maximum uh, peaks so as we can see uh, this is about age versus gender okay so this is about uh, the female gender is like peaking at the age of 30 so that means the female customers uh, are more like are more in count at the age of 30 in our data so basically here we get uh, an overview a maximum peak uh, maximum peaks of uh, all the three columns on the basis of their gender roles so next uh, enough of visualizations to get an overview of, about what the uh, clustering is go going to take place and uh, let's move on to the main uh, clustering part main ml part of it so what we did is uh, we uh, split the uh, main data and here we have two columns annual income and spending score because that's what we are concerned about we are concerned about on the purchase history of the customers although we we did some visuals uh, regarding their age and the gender uh, distribution but mainly we are focused on the uh, the spending score and the annual income so we'll give out only these two uh, columns in the uh, in the model so uh, what we have done over here is we have used a for loop to build and train a k means model where n cluster ranges from 2 to 12 inclusive so what we'll do over here is uh, we'll uh, we'll train the model uh, keeping the n to 2 and then we'll we'll change the n uh, clusters uh, to 3 and then we'll increase one by one and we'll see we'll check out uh, the inertia errors and uh, the slot scores okay so yeah so we have done over here uh, we have we have created uh, a list n clusters we have used range 2 by 13 2 comma 13 that means it will create a list of uh, numbers from 2 to 12 and then we have created blank lists inertia errors slot scores uh, which will score uh, like which will uh, you know store the uh, values which is calculated from here so now we have created a for loop for k in n clusters model is equal to k means n cluster is equal to k and random state will keep 42 and in n in 8 is equal to 10 so now what happens is model dot fit is equal to x 
so we'll try to we'll fit the model uh, uh, and we'll well we'll fit to x which we have created over here x is these two columns so now we'll fit the model and then we'll calculate inertia dot errors append model dot inertia what what is happening over here is uh, we are telling uh, python to 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 store whatever is calculated in model dot inertia into the into these two lists okay so inertia errors uh, model dot inertia will get stored into inertia uh, errors and then uh, silhouette scores uh, will be stored into uh, you know silhouette scores so basically uh, what we, we what we are doing is every time this loop will run it will increase the number of uh, n clusters it will increase the number of clusters and then uh, it will store the inertia errors it will store the silhouette scores into that list so now we have uh, inertia errors and silhouette scores uh, i have just uh, you know uh, printed the last three values of inertia errors and silhouette scores uh, to get an overview about the numbers we are getting then what we'll do is we'll create an uh, we'll we'll create an elbow plot uh, it's basically uh, it's basically a line line uh, chart uh, of of inertia versus number of clusters so as we can see as the number of cluster is increasing the inertia errors is decreasing so what we want is to get a uh, to get an efficient uh, model of k means we need less errors that means the, the lesser the inertia errors that means stronger is our k means model okay so but but there is always a but in machine learning so but uh, we can't have number of clusters as 12 because there is no uh, there is no uh, like meaning to you know group uh, group the data if the number of groups are so many it's easier if the number of groups are uh, less so it's it becomes easier for the marketing team to plan out to plot out strategies if the number of clusters are less if the number of clusters are 12 then it's one and the same thing it's we are not doing a great job but it depends on the data as i've said there is always a but in machine learning next let's plot the same type of graph the lean, uh, the elbow plot or we can say it as a line chart for the silhouette scores versus number of clusters now we get a we get an interesting graph plot over here uh, and we can see that you know at this this is the peak silhouette score should be maximum okay uh, silhouette score higher the silhouette score that is that means uh, stronger the model so here we have the highest silhouette score at at 5 it's like between 4 and 6 so it's the number of cluster should be 5 so we get we got a number of cluster the the, the most efficient uh, model will create by by this by putting number of cluster to be 5 okay so uh, now we are creating a final model k means number of cluster is 5 random state is equal to 42 n in it is equal to 10 and then we'll fit the same data x into that model and uh, now what is happening is labels we, we have defined that labels is equal to final model dot labels centroids centroids is the center of a particular group so each group that means each label will have a center point uh, around which the the points will be uh, spread out so we'll print out to get an overview of what numbers we are getting and then uh, the, the the final communicate is uh, we are trying to plot the we are trying to communicate uh, by visually looking at the plots so here we have annual score annual income versus spending score and we have we have got a plot of all the groups we, we said that number of clusters should be five so we are getting zero one two three four that means these are five groups we are getting so these are five groups of uh, customers which our machine learning model has created so uh, k means cluster k means cluster is a unsupervised learning uh, unsupervised type of learn, machine learning because uh, here we have not provided any labels we have not provided any labels while training the data while training the model we have just provided the features that was annual income and spending score and by that it has it has uh, you know grouped the labels accordingly so this is an uh, this is a type of unsupervised uh, learning so now uh, this is xgp that is uh, we, are, we are creating x uh, by group by 
so we are creating an x it is grouped by uh, the, uh, the 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 groups which are created we are creating a uh, basically we are creating uh, the same x annual income and spending score according to the groups okay so we are we, uh, here uh, it is x dot group by final underscore model dot labels dot mean so we are calculating the mean of all the groups and we are going to plot so here we uh, we got the xgb now we are going to plot a side by side bar chart of xgb so that we can understand what kind of groups we are getting so the first uh, the zeroth group uh, has uh, has an annual income uh, of around 40 to 60 that means almost 60 that means we can say 55k uh, dollars and it has a spending score which is less than that uh, 50k uh, dollars and the first group is like with a higher annual income above 80k dollars and it is uh, spending uh, approximately equal to 80k dollars now comes the second group uh, as in the third group uh, it's labeled as second so uh, it has a annual income very less as in you know the annual income is around 20 to 40 that is 25 30 k dollars but the spend score the spending score is is almost 80 k dollars so that is too much i think these are the young uh, people or the young the youth who is who is not even you know not uh, bothered of, bothered about the future or they are not you know they just want to spend Le uh, they don't care about their uh, annual income they just want to spend they just want to enjoy their lives okay and now uh, the third uh, group here has annual income of more than 80 80k dollars but the spending score is very less and we can we can uh, assume or we can approximate that these this is the group uh, around 40s to 50s or 60s who who spend less okay they earn more but they spend less uh, they they are working on their savings or these are the groups of people i can't uh, specify their ages but we can we can tell by the plots that these are the type of people inside this group and the fourth is they are earning uh, their annual income is also low and then spending all uh, they are spending also uh, approximately equal to 20 so here uh, we have uh, five total of five groups which our model has uh, cluster so thank you so much for uh, giving your time and uh, once again i would like to thank prodigy infotech for giving me such a wonderful opportunity uh, to you know learn machine learning in a new way and you know implement uh, it practically so that it gets into my head properly.